If your man or woman come home say, you know what, I love you, but I think I wanna, that's their truth. It's their truth. We are all be in a better place. If, and like I said, embrace that child. I embrace it every day, every day, every day. I embrace that little girl in me. And that's why I am where I am today. Because like you said, even with the transitioning of my family members, mm -hmm. I had to go back to my foundation, mm -hmm. what I was raised up on, mm -hmm. the foundation that made me be here on solid ground. On, so man. that's why I'm able to get through this. I've always been a woman. I don't want to be a man. Yeah. I don't want to be like a man. I want my man to lead me. I want to follow him. You hear me? I want to be soft. I want to contribute. I want to pray over him. Come on I wanna now. Speak into Come on him. now. Say that with your chest. Yeah. They need yeah. to understand. Yeah. Go back to that childhood. Look at the grandmothers. Look at the elders. That's why they've been married. What are we the talking about? Because they look at, they embrace that childhood, that that little girl in them. Mm -hmm. For me, mm -hmm. I can't say nobody else. So when things happen, when people do things now, it's a spirit. I always tell people, don't look at the person, look beyond that. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. <laughs> well, I'm going to sit here like this while you keep speaking. I'm just going to sit here like this for the rest of it because you going, <laughs> sis, and I'm here for every part of it. You are now tuned in to Live on Broadway Podcast, the number one relationship podcast in the world. <laughs> Mike, 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 Greetings and salutations to you all. Welcome back to another episode of Live on Broadway Podcast, where the situations matter more than the relationships. Perspectives will be respected by everybody. And I'm talking about if this is your first time, if this is your first time tapping in, don't be easily threatened or angered because much like you, much like you, every giant here first started off as a perfect stranger. We ask that everybody tap in and get in tune with what we're doing on Live on Broadway Podcast by way of... Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and everywhere else podcasts are available. Tap in, tap in, and tap in. Greetings and salutations to you all. Click! I think tonight's going to be a very fun, interesting, and interactive conversation. Um, I think that, you know... Uh, so much going, so much drama in the LBC. It's kind of hard being Snoop Deagle Double G. I think um, a lot of the conversation that's going to be had here tonight is going to be that brought to you in part by um, a lot of serious tone. Uh, the tonality of tonight is definitely going to be serious. I don't think it's going to be something that 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 you know. So if you guys are here for the shits and the giggles, I tell you right now, just slide to the left. You know, because uh, a lot of the conversation, respectfully, is going to involve um, simply love should have brought you, brought you home last night. You should have been with me. If y'all know, y'all know. I can't play the clip that I want to play, but there's a particular scene um, setting the tone from Boomerang where my guy, Eddie Murphy, one of my favorite movies, my guy, Eddie Murphy, he... uh. Maybe I'm aging myself a bit too. My guy Eddie Murphy, he's dating Holly Berry. But Holly Berry is the transition from her, her friend, which is Robin Givens, right? But the, the interesting part to it is, is Robin Givens is outside. And Marcus was outside, played, well, Marcus, uh, Eddie Murphy, same person. Marcus actually starts liking her a lot. Starts liking Robin Givens a lot. But Robin Givens is playing the same game that he's playing, giving him a, own dose, his, a, a dose of his own mes medicine, and then he ends up being with her friend, which is... Uh, I forget, what was her name in the movie? Anybody knows? What, what was um, uh, Holly Berry name in the movie? Y'all remember? 
Angela. Angela. Ah, there we go. You see it? Listen, that, that good old brain cell. It works every now and again. Oh, Thank you, Allie. You don't smoke no herb. You know, <laughs> so um, so yeah, there's that scene, and I want to tell I want to talk about it because the conversation that we having tonight is you're unsuccessful in relationships because you settled in the past. Respectfully. You settled in on something that probably, you know, and you never thanked yourself, you never rewarded yourself. And I'm going to play a clip and then I want you guys to tap in and because we're going to respond to this clip. We're definitely going to respond to this clip. So without further ado, let's get to it. Live on Broadway podcast. Y'all know how we do. My spiritual advisor, Monica Zanz, had me write a letter from my big self to my little self, apologizing for leaving him. And then when you're done with that letter, switch to your non-dominant hand, which activates a different part of your brain. And I wrote a letter from little Garrett to big Garrett. Oh my God. All of a sudden, all these things that I had suppressed and stuffed down for years that I completely forgot about all came out. F you, you left me, you this, you that. And I just allowed myself to truly feel those suppressed emotions and let it all out. And as soon as I was done with that letter, I was like, I've deprived myself from the full range of spectrum of me. I've been operating as half. Wow. Round of applause. Because we're going to unpack some things tonight. We've been unpacked. We're going to unpack some things tonight because I wonder to what capacity have we been operating as half of ourselves? I wonder to what capacity, you know, when I first heard the clip, I said, geez, I, you know, I, you know, there's a lot of support and a lot of giants tap in with us and, and, and there's a lot of love. But I often wonder how much of us are occupying the space of half navigating our day to days as half. You know, and then, you know, the conversation is slowly mature because um, I have some other questions, you know. And um, so tap in with us live on Broadway podcast. I throw it to Clubhouse first. How many of you guys you feel you've been operating as half? Tap in with us. So you mean like, can I answer to the clip or uh, I'm confused? Like half? Well, answer that question. Have you, do you believe that you've been act, uh, act, um, moving in the space of the world as whole or as half? Hmm. Dang, that's deep, Broadway. So I want to say, like, I think towards the beginning of the year, I was definitively half. This, as we go towards like ending of this year, I feel more. Hmm. I feel like I'm more alive and it's crazy because I'm in the most amount of distress that I've been in my whole life, but, um, I'm in my truth. So, you know, it feels good. Okay. Okay. I can respect that. I can respect that. Do Prem, how about you, beloved? You feel like you've been occupying and moving in the spaces of the world as half or whole, okay? If I'm going to be honest, half. If I'm to be honest, I'm not happy with my productivity. If I'm to be honest, <clears throat> I know I can do more. Mm. I know I can, I know I can show up better. Um, and so I can I could admit that. And so I'm in the process of discovering why, uh, you know, what the the why behind it, and um, you know, uh, what they call it the imposter syndrome. Right where you know you doubt yourself or whatever. Um, so yeah, I mean I'm able to <laughs> have uh, you know I'm I'm all right, but I could do way more, man. I just could do more. Mm. So I hope that answers your question. Nah, it certainly does. Certainly, certainly does. Um, wow, the imposter syndrome and working on yourself and seeing and seeing areas of opportunity. Right, interesting. And Angel said, before it was this, but now it's that. I get it. Allison, tap in with me, Queen. Definitely have. Um, I feel like there's so much more than meets the eye 
there's so much that I have not tapped into yet. So, um, and I'm not one to make resolutions, but I truly believe that um, within the next few months that I'm going to encounter a breakthrough and it all has to do with me putting in the work. So um, that's something I have to work on. You see, so I guess an instant follow-up question would be why, right? But before I, before you guys answer the why, you feel like you've been operating as half or whole now, right, Angel? Uh, let me answer the question. I feel like I feel like I've been operating currently at my fullest potential with that of what I know, you know. So with that of what I know of myself, I've been operating at full capacity. Um, is there room for growth? Af absolutely, absolutely. I still got the stitches. They they still hasn't. They they still. <laughs> my mouth is still kind of. You know what I mean. So just bear with me. Um, Yes, so I've been operating as much to my ability as possible, you know? So I feel like with with that in mind, yes, right now on December uh, 1st, I've been operating as my full and complete self. Welcome, Benny. I've been moving and operating as my full and complete self, that of what I know. But there's other parts of me that I know there's areas of opportunity that needs fixing, Right. Um, but again, it's one of those things where I'm doing the work though. I'm actively like doing the work, all those things people say you should be doing and, 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 or, or you should be trying. I'm actively doing those things. You get what I'm saying? So, um, um, right now, Benoit and, and D, I asked the room a question, which is I played the clip and I'll play it again. But the question is, is are you guys, moving and operating under your full potential are you being your truth are you being your whole self or do you feel like you occupying and navigating through the world as half of who you are tap in with me d i go to you first king so am i am i operating as my full, full best potential um i would say no but i can totally from what I know about me now, what I've been the studies, the case studies I've been doing when I'm, when I'm actively with someone that I actually enjoy. And then when I'm not, that I feel like that extra space, like it's, it's kind of left out for me to be able to build with somebody else. I, I don't think I want to be my whole self because then what the hell I need anybody else for. I do believe that there is a woman that is going to really light it up and, and make me step it up to whatever my full potential is. And, and I would like to give women that credit that I can't, I don't think I can reach that with by myself. I feel like I've done a lot alone and a lot of independent things as a man in the 47 years, but definitely um, when it comes to that woman connection, I think that mm. I, 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 I 100% believe that that's what's missing and that's what I yearn for more, but I just, I'm not a settler. So that's why it's a little more difficult for me because I do know when I do lock in and y'all see me, pretty much, you know, hang around for, for a whole nine months for a situation that, that I was trying to make happen. So it, it's true. possible for me to be that way. It, I know it's possible, but it got to be what I want to do. So that's really what I think. So, no, I'm not my I'm not at my, my best ability. And I always believe that as you grow, as, until you're dead, you're always growing. So I'm never going to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I figured it all out because I, I learn something new every day about myself. I like it. I like it. Just a fair attempt to... um. Give context to what we're speaking about so Benny can uh, answer the question correct. I'm going to play the video again. Tap in with us live on Broadway Podcast. My spiritual advisor, Monica Zanz, had me write a letter from my big self to my little self, apologizing for leaving him. And then when you're done with that letter, switch to your non-dominant hand, which activates a different part of your brain. And I wrote a letter from <laughs> To Big Garrett. Oh my God. All of a sudden, all these things that I had suppressed and stuffed down for years that I completely forgot about all came out. F you. You left me. You this. You that. And I just allowed myself to truly feel those suppressed emotions and let it all out. And as soon as I was done with that letter, I was like, 
I have deprived myself from the full range of spectrum of me. I've been operating as half. As half, he said. As half. So it gets so much more complicated because, uh, but I wanted to answer, I wanted to ask the room that question, Benny. So if you could, uh, do you feel like you've been moving as whole or as half, Benny? Tap in with us. This half, um, there's always room for me to activate my my greatest self. But to say that I've been doing that lately, you know, I'd be I'd be capping. Mm. Um, I think that a lot of times we suppress certain parts of ourselves as a way to protect ourselves, or so we think, and that can be problematic in the long run. I'll park it there. Mm. Mm. And that could be problematic in the long run. That's solid to me. Makes sense to me. Um, it's, it's interesting because I feel like I feel like a lot of times we move in the spaces of the world and and we you know we're we're so we're, we're so conscious. Hey, Cass. Hey, what's up? What's happening with you, Cass? Um, I'm playing a video and and pretty much um I'll play it again for you because you know it, it's powerful. It's about a, it's about a young man and. His spiritual advisor asks him to pretty much write a letter from his older self with his dominate as as his older self with his dominating hand, and then respond to that same letter with his uh with his less dominated hand, dominating hand as as a uh, as a response letter to his as his younger self to his older self. And when I heard it, I was like, wow, that's so powerful because a lot of times, a lot of times um, we, we aren't honest with ourselves, right? We, th there's things that's going on with us. And, and, and I believe a lot of why relationships fail isn't always on the other person. Even the moments and the things that we think it is, it sometimes be us. Right, it's not all the time. It's it's them, but I'll I'll unpack those things uh, a little bit later. But um, Cass, do you feel like you've been moving in the world and occupying the space, occupying spaces as your full self or as half of you? I'm still trying to figure that one out. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I mean that's a real response. That's that's that's. I'm currently on a journey of self-reflecting um, and releasing things that will allow me to continue to, um, well, that will, that allows me to repeat negative patterns mm. or allow me to choose the people that I'm not supposed to choose. So I'm on a journey now recognizing that stuff. So I don't know if I'm acting half full but eventually I'll be living up to my full potential. Mm. That's solid. I respect it. I respect it. Um, interestingly enough, right? I'm going to play the clip again because um, so many different times you play it and you start to hear things different. And I don't want it to be new to you guys. I want it to be old to you guys, to the YouTube listeners, to the podcast, uh, to YouTube viewership, to the podcast listeners. I want it to be old to you guys so you hear it entirely and for what it's meant to be heard for. Tap in with us live on Broadway podcast. Check it out. My spiritual advisor, Monica Zanz, had me write a letter from my big self to my little self apologizing for leaving him. And then when you're done with that litter, switch to your non-dominant hand, which activates a different part of your brain. And I wrote a letter from little Garrett wow. to big Garrett. Oh my God. All of a sudden, all these things that I had suppressed and stuffed down for years that I completely forgot about all came out. F you, you left me, you this, you that. And I just allowed myself to truly feel feel those suppressed emotions and let it all out. And as soon as I was done with that letter, I was like, I have deprived myself from the full range of spectrum of me. Mm -hmm. I've been operating as half. I've been operating as half. All right. So here's the thing, right? The question that I want to generally ask everyone 
is this one simple question, but it may take some different layers in unpacking. Marcus from Boomerang, known as Eddie Murphy, dated Robin Givens. He was with her. He really liked her a lot. You've seen, you seen Boomerang, right, Cass? He really liked her a lot. He was playing this game. His boys knew him, at, knew him as a player, player from the Himalayas. Um, and so he got a dose of his own medicine. Unfortunately, that's what it takes for men, right? For men to get a dose of their own medicine. So he gets a dose of his own medicine and he's strung out. He's all over the place for this woman. Then, for whatever reason, the plot thickens because he pulls the switch and then he starts dating Robin Givens' friend, which is Angela, which is known as Holly Berry, right? And she says something to him, love, if you love me, love should have brought you home last night. And so coupling that with this, I feel like there's a part of the movie where if Marcus, like remember when they read their Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? I just want to redo a little bit of Boomerang. And I would like to see Marcus as a child. I would like to see Marcus as a child and understand what Marcus went through to see how did he become the man that he is? How did he become that player? Right? I wonder what his what that what that message, what that letter would read, right? So it's my questions to you guys. Have you confronted your younger you? Have you confronted them? Have you sat before you and had that, did that mirror work and asked yourself, forget the day to day, right? Let's forget about the day to day. Because I come on this platform all the time and I talk about holding ourselves accountable. Well, this is the root of it. This is the root of holding ourselves accountable. Writing those letters. And if we haven't, that's fine, right? Because I haven't wrote, I haven't written the letter. I, the letter is not written by way of Broadway, right? But unfortunately, if you're familiar with my story, I've had some time away to sit alone in a on vacation for a sufficient <laughs> a sufficient amount of time, and I've had the time to actually do the work, right? I just never wrote the letter. Actually, I'm lying. I did write myself a letter. But the, the, the letter that I wrote was a panic letter, but we'll, we'll unpack that another day, another time. Um, but have you confronted your younger you? This, I'm going to be honest with you guys, this is going to probably be a hard podcast. So if you guys don't want to share, I'm totally with it. I totally get it. Because this is probably going to uh, 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 suggest a certain amount of vulnerability. And I think the listeners, by way of, I don't care whose story you tell. It don't got to be yours. I would prefer it to be yours. But if it's not yours and you can pull from somebody else's story and somebody can get a message from it and learn about, learn about something, be able to take something away from this moment, then I would love for you guys to do so. So I yield my mic to you all. Um, Cass, give me one second. I'm going to throw it to Clubhouse. Angel, tap in with me, Queen. Have you confronted your younger you? Tap in with me, Angel. So absolutely have. And that is why I was able to say, you know, I'm where I'm at whole, right? The crazy part is, like, I had this exact kind of conversation with um, my therapist the other day. Um, and... I was not giving myself enough credit for everything that I do. And she, um, I, I'm going somewhere with this. So she reminded me of that. Um, cause I, I, I'm very hard on myself. So, you know, I think, you know, the kids, three kids, my mom has dementia, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And I didn't give myself the grace. And I say that because I've always been super hard on myself because of my past. So I can say that I'm operating whole. And when I say whole, I mean like, I'd be giving my everything because I let go of that little girl. Like I, I really was very hard on that, on that little girl. Um, mm. especially things that I, that I went through that, and you know what the crazy thing is, you know, looking at my daughter, my daughter's about to be 13. The incident that changed my life, I was 14. It was only a year older than her. And I see her like doing her thing. And it, it I know that me, me talking to that little girl enables her to be a little girl because if I would not have done the work, I would have trapped. You understand know what I'm saying? Right. I would have kept her 
hostage to my trauma. Mm, hostage to your trauma. Wow. I'm cool with letting it. I'm cool with letting it breathe for a moment. I'm cool with that. Allison, tap in with me, Queen. Have you confronted your younger you? Yes, I have. Um, I I did it about four times. My sixteen-year-old self, my twenty-five-year-old self. My thirty-year-old self and my forty-year-old self, and um, all those times, it was extremely hard because I had to say it's not your fault. Mm. Um, you said no. It's okay. You did the best that you could. Those were the things that I had to say to myself because I was carrying a heavy, heavy, heavy load. Yeah. And because of that, it caused me to give pieces to other people because I was broken. And a lot of times when you're broken, you can't give your all to anybody else because you haven't given all to yourself. So because of that, I had to take a hard look and and basically comfort myself and and have a nice conversation and, and tell myself those things in order to That's okay. Take it easy. In order to um In order to push through, because I know that, and I knew that, it was going to get better. And that it wasn't going to last forever. And that those things were just situations that happened, and it didn't define who I was and who I was going to become. The, t- the the phrase, it gets greater later, resonates hard and loud for me because sometimes the situations that we deal with, we cause it to define us. Mm. This is why people can't get out of the hood. Mm. This is why people can't stop being around the people that heavily influence them negatively. This is why you're stuck. You can't get stuck. You don't stay there. <laughs> There's so much more ahead of you. So in writing that letter, we, you know, it's almost like putting it in a in a bottle. So your future self can read it and say, damn, look at where I was and yeah. look at where I am now. <sighs> Allison, Allison, Allison. Um, since the inception of you, you've been nothing but beautiful inside and out. And um, uh, I, you know, I don't know all of what it is, no all the particulars that you've been through, Queen. But what I do know for certain is that the outcome, the outcome has been outstanding, Queen. The outcome has been outstanding. So sending you love and light, and um, and 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 Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, like I want to hug you right now. Um, ah, oh, man. Um, Cass, I'm coming to you in a moment. D and Benny, give me one second. Cass, tap in with me, Queen. Uh, as I've been asking everyone else, you know, I want to ask you the same question, Queen. Uh, have you confronted your younger you? First and foremost, I want to commend the two women that spoke before me. Yeah. You both are powerful. And it takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot of strength for you to even to for you to be able to recognize your traumas mm. and to relive it 
and to fight through it and to create a beautiful path for your children for them not to have to go through with what you've been through or for you to put on your trauma on them. Like you guys are so Absolutely. beautiful for that. And I commend you both for like taking that ride and taking that self analyzation and doing the work. Mm. Like you guys are dope. Um, as for me, I did confront the younger me and as an adult, I am learning to not allow people to dictate who I am and what I should be doing and how I should be moving. Absolutely. And I've learned that I am the narr narrator of my story. And it took years for me to get there, but I needed to get there when I had my son. That was the person that put the battery in my back. So that little girl, she was strong. She was preparing me for the person that I am today. Um, Cause I'm a boss and I operate like a boss and what she went through. <laughs> <laughs> she became that, like for her to come out of what she went through, like she became that boss. And like, I'm, I don't wish anything what I went through on anybody, but you know, God gives us our experiences for a reason. And Amen. for us to tell our truth so the next person behind us can know it's okay uh, for going through the things that you guys went through. It just takes a powerful person to get through it. So that's all I got to say. Um, I know you can't see it because you're on Instagram. But on Clubhouse, they 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 applauding, they giving you the exclamation point, like like they feeling what you saying, and um and and as, as do I, you know, as do I. I mean, I, you guys are transmuting at a very very high frequency, and uh, you know, I, I want to switch it up a little bit and throw it to get it from a male's perspective, you know. Um, I got Dupreme in here, I got DWI in here, and I would love to get it from these gentlemen. D, do you feel like you've confronted your younger you? Uh, so you say confronted, because that was that was going pretty pretty heavy right there. Confronted. Um, I feel like I um I understand um the word confront though. Like, mm, nah, I didn't I didn't confront it yet to the point where like I got it all figured out. But I've definitely I've been playing it through my head on things that I've been through and what it took for me to get to this point. And some things happen that happen and they just, it, it, it's going to be what it's going to be. You can't really, you, you can connect the dots going backwards and, and connect it, but it's not still happening. So obviously my life will start to change for it. Had always been, it has been changing in the direction I needed it to, but a lot of the things that the, a lot of the reasons why I am the way that I am, uh, I was just telling my sister then this today, since everybody was being so transparent, um, is that I spend a lot more time alone than I'm used to or that I would like to. Obviously, in the you know the business that I do, I was always around people, so I guess it didn't matter if I was in a relationship because I had people around me all the time, all the time. People all around, you know, doing the work, people working with me, a lot of pretty women, you know, doing the radio shows. A lot of different guests coming through, so I always was around people, people, people. And now, I find myself alone more, and I have more time to think about why am I here alone. So that part is where I have to start digging. I don't. It's very optional because I can find you know people to be around, but it's who I want to be around. So that's the part that I'm building with myself with now. But I'm no, in, I'm in no way trying to keep going down the rabbit hole of what happened to me and why I'm this way. I, I, like you said, I confronted it and I understand some of the ways and some of the things that I was doing um, as I was coming up, but now I'm no longer in that 
same lifestyle I was in. So it gives me the space now that I can start um, building for the future and then making it make sense for the future. Because the way that I was living for the last 20 something years was really a grind and a hustle. And I really didn't spend too much time worrying about what a woman or what, what a relationship needed to be for me because um, I was busy doing what I was doing, trying to survive. But now that that is no longer my plight, I think it's starting to it's starting to arise of what what are things that I need to do to so, so that I can move forward. Yeah. So yeah. Um. So confronting it and 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 like saying like yeah I'm I'm good now. No, I'm not there yet. But I I've, I've been working with it, like understanding, doing doing the work in my head on how I got here, so I can make sure that I don't spend the next I guess fifty years. God willing, you know, in the same situation. So, so, um, thank you, thank you for that, D. Right, the transparency there is is outstanding. Uh, and Cass says, Cass says, thank you to everybody that supported her commentary. Um, you know, it's it, it's it's different when you hear it from a man, right, versus when you hear it from a lady. You know, because you know, um, a therapist would say men and women, our brains are wired differently. You know, women see things like this, men we see things like that. Right, um, we got some new giants that that that's pulling up with us, and um, I'm gonna play the clip in a moment again. But before I do, uh, so so you guys can understand why we're answering the question: Have you confronted your younger self? Uh, I want to throw it to Benawa. I want to throw it to Benawa, and um, and I'll, I'll come back to Instagram in a moment. But how you doing, Queen? Um, um, I'm gonna come back to Instagram in a moment, but Benno, I want to ask you the simple question, Queen: Have you confronted your younger you? Confronted? Yes. Fully healed from it? No. Mm. I would. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I definitely can reflect on my younger self and see how it affects certain patterns that I engage in now as an adult that I'm still working through and, and trying to break as a result of things I experienced at a younger age. So I understand why I do a lot of things that I do or move the way in certain ways in which I, I think um, are not the most helpful. But um, I also recognize that I have to work through uh, healing through that. So Yes, I have acknowledged my younger self, but I'm still healing through my younger self. And I'll talk to you. Wow. 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 I love I I, I love the acknowledgement. I love the acknowledgement. I, I, I love the I love the accountability. Um do just 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 you know, just bear with me for a second, King. I'm gonna play this clip. I'm gonna play this clip again because uh, we 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 have uh, we have Jan, uh, Jan in here. What up, though, Jan? And and I'm gonna come to you in a moment, but I want you to understand why I'm asking this question. So I'm gonna play the clip again. I'm gonna play the clip again so you can understand where and how we got this far. And um, there's gonna be some more unpacking in a moment. Live on Broadway podcast. Tap in with us. My spiritual advisor, Monica Zanz, had me write a letter from my big self to my little self, apologizing for leaving him. And then when you're done with that letter, switch to your non-dominant hand, which activates a different part of your brain. And I wrote a letter from little Garrett to wow. big Garrett. Oh my God. All of a sudden, all these things that I had suppressed and stuffed down for years that I completely forgot about all came out. F you, you left me, you this, you that. And I just allowed myself to truly feel those suppressed emotions and let it all out. And as soon as I was done with that letter, I was like, I have deprived myself from the full range of spectrum of me. Mm -hmm. I've been operating as half. I've been operating as half. Tap in with me, Jan. Um, how you feel? Have you, do you feel as though you've confronted your younger you, Queen? Welcome to the platform. Greetings and salutations to you, Queen. 
I'm speaking. I'm 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 speaking to you, Queen. You. <laughs> Are you speaking to me? <laughs> um, blessings to you. Blessings to everyone. Um, first of all, I want to give honor to God. Say that, Amen. The head of my life, and I want to say good evening to everyone. And to elaborate on your question, I confront my inner child every day, mm. every single day. Because if you think about it, when you're a child, when somebody hurts you, you forgive them like that. You don't even hold on to it. A child, you can do the worst thing to a child. And they will be easily, when you go to them and say, I'm sorry, they forgive you like that. So I always show compassion. I always show grace. Yeah. And I always show love because I can't speak for anybody else but for myself. I came from a mother and dad that understood, even though they didn't stay together, that had nothing to do with me. They both poured into me equally. Mm. Yeah. And what I love the most about that is because my mother, I just lost my mom not too long ago. Oh, I'm so sorry. My to hear mom. That, Never said one thing about my dad. Bad thing. She said, when your dad get, when you get older, you will see who your dad is for yourself. And when I got older and things started to go wrong, Charlotte knows my story. It was different women around me. I didn't know who these women were. But, you know, when you are I'm an only child, but then I'm the oldest of four girls with my dad. I'm the only child with my mom. And my dad used to bring different women around me. That's your auntie. That's your cousin. That's my dad. So I'm not going to question him. Sure. You understand what I'm sure. saying? So one day, I believe I was 25. He always took me on daddy daughter's dates. And he was like, remember the time when I brought all these different women around you? And I said, this was your auntie. I said, yeah. He said, baby, that wasn't a relative at all. And I was like, oh, my God. So you mean my life was a lie? He said, no, baby. He said, let me ask you this. With all this stuff being said, you know the truth. Do you love me any less? I said, absolutely not. He said, and that's how I want you to always look at life, that you should not put your expectations on people. Amen. See, I looked at it like my dad is this superhero, this and this and this and this, not knowing that my dad felt short too of God's grace. But he always made me understand that Always embrace that little girl in you. Charlotte, no, I, I'm, I'm a big kid. I'm 42 years old. But when I tell you, it's so much love in me. Yeah. This world, yeah. any situation I've been through, yeah. would never, 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 even with my mom transitioning yeah. to another place, mm -hmm. this world is not going to make my heart better mm -hmm. or cold. Yeah. Because I know it's work that I have to do, like Charlotte said, for my other sisters that I reach behind them and say, you don't know how to deal with it? Let me help Let you. me show you, yeah. Let me show you how to heal. Uh -huh. Because you know why? Look at me. I always tell people, especially I tell people, if you call yourself being a Christian, Christian means being Christ-like. What did Jesus always do? Come on he now. Forgets. He forgets. He loves. He showed grace, despite what how anybody treated him. He always embraced that little boy. He knew he was the son of God. And that's what people don't understand. If they knew their position, that I, I just said this to my pastor, that a lot of people was violated. You know what I mean? Even as a child. Yeah. That wasn't even their choice. It was taken away from them. And some people don't know how to deal with certain things. Some people don't know even have God within their family. But mm -hmm. when you are a man or woman of God, that's when you're supposed to look behind you. And like the young sister said, we got to heal each other, especially in the black community. So to that question for me and to anybody else that hears my testimony, we need to embrace that child in us every day and forgive. The key word is forgive. If we forgive and stop putting our expectations on people and allow people to speak their truth. Wake that up. 
You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Allow people to speak their truth. Yeah. That's why there's a lot of relationships that's not good because they don't let their partners speak their truth. Hello. If your man or woman come home say, you know what, I love you, but I think I want to, that's their truth. It's their truth. We are all be in a better place. If, and like I said, embrace that child. I embrace it every day. Every day. Every day. I embrace that little girl in me. And that's why I am where I am today. Because like you said, even with the transitioning of my family members, mm-hmm. I have to go back to my foundation. Mm-hmm. What I was raised up on. Mm-hmm. The foundation that made me be here on solid ground. On, so man. that's why I'm able to get through this because of the, the it, it's different. See, this thing about with this social media stuff, this is not me. I'm a woman. I've always been a woman. I don't want to be a man. Yeah. I don't want to be like a man. I want my man to lead me. I want to follow him. You hear me? I want to be soft. I want to contribute. I want to pray over him. Come on I now. Speak into Come him. on now. Say that See, with your chest. This is what people need. Yeah. They need yeah. Yeah. Go back to that childhood. Look at the grandmothers. Look at the elders. That's why they've been married. What are we the talking about? They because they look at, they embrace that childhood, that, that little girl in them. Mm-hmm. For me, mm-hmm. I can't say nobody else, but I'm saying for me, for me, embrace that child. Embrace it. Yeah. Because if you sit there and have a forgiving heart, even towards the ones that hurt you the most, you'll be able to keep going. You'll be able to heal. Because you know why? Even on the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they not know what they do. So when things happen, when people do things now, it's a spirit. I always tell people, don't look at the person. Look beyond that. It's the spirit. It's the spirit. Well, I'm going to sit here like this while you keep speaking. I'm just going to sit here like this for the rest of it because you're going, sis, and I'm here for every part of it. So, you better go. So that's what I'm, I'm saying to my brothers. Give us that word. To my brothers and sisters on this line, embrace your childhood every day. Embrace that little boy and embrace that little girl because the more you keep doing that, mm. you'll learn. I remember when I was, I was so loving back then. Yeah. I was so caring back then. Yeah. I was so giving back then. Yeah. I was so happy back then. I was at peace back then. Back then. Back then. But the difference is we ain't doing that back then. We doing it now. We need a right now spirit. A right now spirit. Hey, Cass, let me tell you something. You hear me? Um, I'm about to knock the whole shit off. Listen, um... <laughs> I don't know where we found her, but uh, uh, we. <laughs> this is my sister right here. <laughs> listen, I could easily Wait. listen to another twenty Wait. minutes. Okay. Go away. Listen, she is the older me. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. When I get her age, mm-hmm. I'm, that's who I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. her spirit is so beautiful, and what she's saying Round of is applause. so facts. Round of applause. God damn it. Whew. So back to that Broadway. We just got to embrace that little girl and little boy every yeah, day. Absolutely. Every day. Every day. Every day. And we'll be able to get through this. This beautiful thing called life, like, because it don't belong to none of us. I, I could tell people on this line right now, I saw death 14 days when my mom was passing. And mm. I heard God speak to me every day. Every single day. So that, that, that changed me. That changed me. I said, God, do what you got to do. Have your way. Use me. Use me. I know that's right, girl. Nothing but divine connection that I'm on this line right now. And if that's somebody that haven't embraced that little boy or little girl, it's time to face it now. It's time to face it. Mm -hmm. No more running. Look that thing right in the face. Because, see, that's what the devil wants you to do. Be feared. Not be in a hilt place. So you can sit up here and justify why you so bitter, why you cold. Oh, such and such did this to me when I was a little girl. Right. Such and such. Did. Everything is a choice. I tell I have three children, 22, 21, and 14. God I was like, you. listen, uh-uh. Mommy can't answer for your sins no more. You know that you do. So you sitting up there want to sit, dwell on things. 
about what daddy did and this and that. Uh-uh. God, God he, only look he, after he, babies and fools. And yes, you know, Morgan he, he went to God. He went to God. Mm -hmm. He repented and he prayed. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. for him. He asked for your forgiveness. So if you want to sit up here and hold on to it and be like, oh, well, my dad didn't know. You want to justify it so you can act silly. Yeah. You just want to hold on that. To you can get over it. The interesting part, the, the interesting part to, to what you're saying, right? It, it runs, mm -hmm. it runs so, you're so on brand to what we're talking about this evening. Yes. And, 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 you know, I get up on, on this platform so often and I preach and, and I, you know, scream from the mountaintops about accountability and holding yourself accountable and, yes. and so forth and so on. And a lot of what you're saying just runs directly with that narrative. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, and you know, a lot of times I say, you know, if you had to turn yourself inside out and look at yourself, you probably yes. roll over and die because you'll see some ugly things. You Absolutely. Know? So, um, you know, I, I thank you, Queen, for, for even blessing us with your you presence. Welcome, like bro, you said, I, I know you don't do this social media thing like that, but goddamn, you had me up here like, <laughs> shit, like, I had to get some pen and pad and, um, and, and take some notes because, uh, it got, it got serious real quick. And, um, yeah. usually, 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 and I'm certain of it, more often than not, death happens that same way. Yes. Death happens fast. It's swift Quick. and it takes you out, right? Recently, Absolutely. we lost somebody in the industry called Hovain, right? Hovain, solid dude, ran across him a few times, exchanged some DMs with him. He gave me some insight on some real solid things. And look how fast he passed away, right? Mm -hmm. And he, he passed away in his sleep. And I'm not going off on a tangent. I'll make it make sense real quick. But okay. they say the way you live is the way you die. And he died in hey. his sleep. All right. He died in his sleep. So I want that to be a testament. And, and somebody, somebody received that word that the way you live is the way that you die. You know, yes. and um, and that's why that's how we often remember it. So for me as a man, you know, I do my darnness to 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 do the work and look in before I look out. So whenever there's a confrontation or I'm at odds or somebody got something to say about Broadway, I look at myself before I look at the part that you played. And I think Absolutely. more often than not, if we start paying attention to the parts that we play in things and not playing that and not having that victim like mentality. Oh, you did this mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, we're going to deal with what you did to me in a moment. But let me deal with me first. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? So um, thank you, Queen. I want to throw it to Dupreme. Dupreme, I'm, I'm uh, bro. You're the perfect person. I would say you 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 are one of the perfect persons to follow after what Queen. What's your name, beautiful? I'm sorry. My name is Basima. Basima. Because I saw Bas and I didn't know how to say the rest. So Basima. You're the perfect person to follow after Basima uh uh Dupreme. Can can you can you tell me, King? Um, have you confronted your younger you? Man, you know, this is this is really deep right now, right? So I, I think um, when I look at my younger me, there's nothing really to confirm. Like, I think for me in this particular topic, I'm embracing my younger me. You know, I had a, um, I had a great, I was, I had a dope childhood, man. I had a dope fucking childhood. So for me, embracing my younger me helps me restore who I was. You know, just after, you know, after after coming out of a marriage, you know, mm -hmm. you, you got to kind of find yourself again, right? And there was a couple of a couple of ways I did that. You know, I had a, a guy that, you know, looked up to me when I was growing up. And, you know, and, you know, so one day I, I'm on, a, you know, I was on the Upper West Side living in uh, 93rd Street um, and um, right off of Central Park West. Slight and flex. My man looks at me. <laughs> uh, nah, 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 because I want to paint the scenario. Okay. So my man Lou Junk, he looked at me and he says, yo, man, you Dupree, man. You Dupree. Do you know who you are? And it kind of, it kind of like woke me up, snapped me out of it because what he was looking at is a person who had lost a lot of himself trying to keep somebody else happy, right? 
And in that, and in, in that exercise, and we, we, we all been there. Like, you know, like women, you know, they, they go through, they pour into their relationships and they forget like who they are and they, their place and whatnot. He said that like shook me up, man. And so I began, and he reminded me, man, he reminded me, he reminded me of, of, you know, the young Dupree running around, you know, just the way, the way, the person who I was mm-hmm. and who I am. Mm-hmm. Right. And so. One, that was the catalyst in, in helping me um, get back to who I was. And, and that's where the journey began. And I speak to you guys today on the first day of December, the year of 2022, um, you know, on 12-1-2-0-2-2, right? We in binary, man. Nothing's going above three. Like, we, these numbers over these past couple of months have been crazy. Mm. And, um... And so, and so, you know, so for me, uh, confronting my, my, my younger self is, is a way, it's a source of inspiration. You know, I played go-karts when I was a kid. We had a backyard, you know, uh, the smell of pine saw through the house, um, you know, in the summertime when my mom would uh, clean up and, you know, uh, uh, you know, the smell of fresh sheets that came off the line in the backyard. Um, uh, you know, the wonderment of the world around me was just, it was amazing. Like I had a dope ass, like childhood, you know what I'm saying? And like, you know, around 10 years old, whatever, then moving out to Coney Island and then my teenage years, like, you know, and then, you know, we moved out there living in a gated community. Coney Island was surrounded by projects as some of y'all know. So like, but we didn't know anything. And then, like, so, you know, of course, we hung out with everybody in Coney Island. So, like, where I lived, it was like the land of the gods. You know what I'm saying? We got knowledge of self, et cetera, et cetera. So I had a really, really great childhood. And I think when I moved away from that childhood is when I found difficulty in my life. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't say I'm confronted. I, have I confronted that child? I've, I've, embraced, I've embraced that. And it's, it's opened up a new realm for me. Um, so yeah, I don't want to keep going, but I could. But, nah, um, nah, oh, you, and last, I hear you. Go ahead. And, and so last note. So I'm working on a project now. Um, my, I, I located my great great grandfather, and oh, wow. um, yeah. So he is part of. Yeah, he's part of what was called the slave narratives, and uh, he was born in 1848. He was interviewed in 1936. Uh, under the project called the right, the writers of project in which they interview former slaves. And I'm able to look at his words uh, and read his words in real time. And, you know, to hear him say what he's saying, it's a very emotional thing. He said 491 words. And um, in, in that, in that short amount of words, you know, I read the beginning. This is, this is what I read, right? So it has his name. His age, he was 93 at the time of this. And it opens up, and they write it in their dialogue, dialogue, dialect. And it reads, I belong to Mr. Gus Eatman, who lived at the old Templeton place on the Durham Highway back as far as I can remember. I don't remember my mama and papa because they were sold before I'd known anything. Mm. I raised myself, mm. and I reckon I'd done a fair job of it. The master... The missus was good to their 25 slaves. And we ain't never got no bad whoopings. That's just the first paragraph. So the emotion that comes up, man, and, and he talks about having his donkey taken and I had to go, like, this shit is real, real deep, y'all. Like, to be able to read the words. And so it's a, it's a whole circle for me, man. Like, I got the 80s. I got the 90s. I got the 2000s, like, you know, quite a bit of history, man. And for it to come full circle, and I find this this document, which um, I'm going to do a monologue, and I'm going to read it in his voice. So I'm, I just happen to be studying it right now as we have this conversation. So not only am I embracing my younger me, I'm embracing, you know, like my great-great-grandfather who was born into slavery, and I'm going to bring his words to life and I'm going to represent this shit, man. I'm going to tell this story. So that's the kind of zone that I'm in on this day. Um, so, yeah, that's it. I land. Wow. Talking about powerful, right? 
He just read the words of his great of his great grandfather, right? It's not is it great 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 great, great. Yeah, great great. Okay, great great. Yeah. And and they have a picture of him. And when I show y'all this picture, because I'm putting it all together, Please when I do. show when I when it, because I look just like him. That's the scariest shit, y'all. This shit is crazy. So, so, so yeah, I, that's what's I, going on, man. Just, just just to draw the parallel, right? When you said you look just like him, it's almost like the words that he just shared. I don't know if you follow me, but it's like he's having a conversation with the younger self in the oh, you get what I'm saying? That that parallel. Absolutely, you, um, there, you got it. Exactly. You, you can't make this stuff. You, you can't. You can't make yeah. it up. You get what I'm saying? You can't make this shit up, man. Um, and, and, and at first, wait, hold on. At first, right, y'all. Just before um Broadway break this shit down even more, y'all gotta imagine. So first, I was reading it, and then I was like, hold up, I couldn't get it. And then I'm saying, hold on. First of all, we speak fast these days. We talk fast. If we were to talk to these people, they look at us like we were speaking another language. Mm -hmm. So I slowed myself down. I put myself as a 93-year-old frail man, mm. and then I read it, and then it all came to me. Mm. I mm -hmm. Um, What I want to do is, what I want to do is, because we said a lot, we did a lot, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step into Final Thoughts. I'm going to step into Final Thoughts. What I do on Final Thoughts is I play the clip one more time. Welcome, Penny. Uh, and and we respond to it one last time. We respond to everything co as a collective. The commentary that was provided, the the uh, the clip that was uh, heard, listened to, and watched, and we collectively leave it all on the floor. Uh, find new thoughts. Find new thoughts. Live on Broadway podcast. Check it out. My spiritual advisor, Monica Zanz, had me write a letter from my big self to my little self, apologizing for leaving him. Mm -hmm. And then when you're done with that letter, switch to your non-dominant hand, which activates a different part of your brain. And I wrote a letter from little Garrett wow. to big Garrett. Oh, my God. All of a sudden, all these things that I had suppressed and stuffed down for years that I completely forgot about all came out. F you, you left me, you this, you that. And I just allowed myself to truly feel those suppressed emotions and let it all out. And as soon as I was done with that letter, I was like, I have deprived myself from the full range of spectrum of me. Mm -hmm. I've been operating as half. Clear. Um, I normally go last. But I'm going to go first for final thoughts. If I could put my headphones on the right way. <laughs> um, final thoughts on Broadway. Because I listened a lot. And I let you guys go a lot. And I, I'm always here for it. Because you guys are powerful. Beyond anything I could ever muster to think of. You know, I often say this. And I'm going to say it again. I consider you guys all giants to me. Because uh, in some uh, metaphor... Meta, um, metaphoric way you guys allow me to stand on your shoulders and see me and show me something i've never seen before heard before or learned before you know so thank you all i'm humbled by you guys vote uh vulnerability and 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 i applaud you guys uh in advance um i don't think collectively as black and brown people final thoughts on broadway i don't think that collectively as black and brown people that we've are able to wholeheartedly or will ever in this lifetime that, that, that I'm speaking of will ever be able to um, confront our younger selves. The reason for that is because I don't feel like we have enough history of our younger selves. Yes. Right. I don't believe that. I believe that um, as much as we want to know and as much as as many books that's available as as many um uh, uh conversations with our elders there's unfortunately things that they're great to have and shared with them so i think it's impossible for in this generation at least for us as a collective i'm not saying one offs i'm speaking as a collective for collectively you know black and brown people don't know our story. We don't know our history. Yes. And it's very hard for you to confront something when you're dealing with impartial information. It's almost like somebody omitting details 
They leaving out certain things purposely from the story. So how can I know how to make that granny's lasagna, granny's macaroni and cheese or whatever recipe if you leaving out very important ingredients that collectively help me understand who I am and how to make that thing taste like granny used to do. Like God rest her soul. My mother yeah. made the world's best spaghetti. I never, yeah. woman never made spaghetti like my mom. And I, and unfortunately she died before I was able to really tap in and understand, yo ma, what, what, what you did with that thing? How you, how you do that thing you did, ma? Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So, um, I believe that until we're actually able to, like, excuse me, I, 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 I put my mercy, um, to you guys tap in with your elders like yeah. let's get closer in tune with our elders and figure out those stories as much as possible the people that you don't like in your family and we'll, we all got at least one if they're your elder they probably holding on to something that you probably need so don't think <laughs> about it as it's as it's as if it's for you think about it like it's for your children and get that information from them so that we can pass it on and pass it back because information we dying at a at a rapid rate people every time I, 2022 i feel i feel like it's been deaf every two weeks in the black community yeah. black and brown community it's been deaf every so often we're dying at an alarming rate yes. so we have to do something and gain this information and get more information get more insight so that we can lean back and reach back and give it to our children our our the kids the aunts the um the nieces and the nephews let's let's hold ourselves accountable and and and, and tap in with that um i yield there i'm gonna throw it to bez Call me B, bro. Just call me B. All right. So I'm I'm gonna throw it to B and um and then I'm gonna go back to Clubhouse. But um that's my final thoughts. Final thoughts on you, B. Um, to piggyback off what you said. Go to the foundation, the elders. That's the only way. The only way we can do this. And if you think about it. The main things about our grandmothers, not taking anything away from the grandpas, mm -hmm. but the grandmothers, they was in that book. Mm -hmm. They was in that Bible. Mm -hmm. See, I can't, like I said, I can't speak for nobody else. I was very close to my great grandmothers, my great grandfathers and my grandmas. No one is here. See, now I'm the elder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the stories I sat underneath them and I listened and I paid attention. So even though they spoke a certain way, they moved a certain way too. Their characteristics. So whatever you need to do, go to that in the beginning, the foundation. In order to build the building, how do it begin? The foundation. The foundation. The foundation. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure that foundation is strong first before you build anything on it. Like I said, this new generation, I may be in the world, but I'm not of it. I'm old school. I'm an old school kind of woman. Yes, I like to look cute. Yes, I may twerk here and here and here, and here but I'm old school, baby. I'm it. old school. I'm an old school kind of girl. I got an old soul. An old soul. Mm -hmm. And if y'all want to get through this life, go back to like Broadway said, the foundation. Y'all got your grandma's here? Y'all got your grandma? It's time now to be underneath her. Because like you said, when I cook for Thanksgiving, they was like, oh, this tastes just like grandma. Da, da, da. Yeah, I know. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because I'm grandma now. Mm -hmm. Make it up. I'm yeah. the elder. Yeah. Because when it's my time to go, now they're going to be like, remember when cousin Basima did this? Remember cousin Basima this and this? And the thing, the most important thing too, we got to be like them elders. Don't be embarrassed about your life. Mm. Tell the good in the bad. See, certain people be on social media. They want to sit up here. Oh, I did this good and that and that, and that. See, grandma was real. Oh, yeah, I know I this and that. When your grandfather acted a certain way, I had to go up the street to Tommy real quick and talk to him. You know how <laughs> grandma was. You understand what I'm saying? We got to keep it real. Yeah, yeah. We got to keep it real. That's one thing about me. Broadway, I'm real. I'm as real as it could get. I and that's it. why a lot of people can't deal with me now. Because like it. you said, you know why? I'm my grandmother. 
Mm. And the difference is why I'm so happy, like you said, with the childhood and stuff, I'm in a relationship with freedom. You can drop the mic and walk away right now. (laughs) Nobody <laughs> asks. Nobody asks where you went, Basima. Nobody asks where you go. You can drop in and go right now. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, like you say, it's time oh, to go man. back yeah. to the foundation. Yeah. Learn your history. Do the research. Mm-hmm. Study. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because the thing about it is that we're not just going to have to do it on this side. We got to do it in the spiritual realm too. Yeah. My grandmother always say. We all face the same devil, but different demons. All of us. Mm -hmm. We got an angel on this side, and we got the devil on this side. He do exist. He do. Say that. Oh, man. Um, Basima, I mean, talking about, I mean... Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, you, you, you don't came through the night, sis. Um, let me yield, let, let me yield the mic to Clubhouse and tap in. I'm gonna start yes. with Miss Penny and um and uh, tap in with us, Penny. Final thoughts. I played the clip. You heard it, Ab. I play it for you. God willing, you here to give final thoughts on it. Um, Penny, tap in with me, Penny. I'm not gonna lie. I don't have much to say. It was kind of hard for me to hear the clip. Okay. But, um, <laughs> I don't have much to say. I got you. I got you. Final thoughts on Allison? Um, hmm. Take your time, young woman. Take your time. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Um, forgive yourself. We have to learn to forgive ourselves because it ends up holding us back from the things that we want to do and and what we want to become in the future. So we have to learn to forgive ourselves. Angel, final thoughts, Queen. Thank you for that, Allie. Forgive yourself. She said it. We felt it. Yeah. It's crazy because it's going to, I'm going to piggyback on that. Um, I had come to this epiphany some time ago. I said, when I was a kid, my parents were my heroes. Oh, my God. Couldn't tell me nothing about them. I became an adult. Started to look at them sideways. And all of a sudden, they they demoted. They're no longer heroes. And then I became a Mm. parent. And they became heroes again. And that's my final thought. First, they love you. Then they hate you. Then they love you again. Yes. She said, when I was a kid, they were superheroes. Mm-hmm. I became an adult, and then they became like normal and human or something to that effect. I'm sorry, I know I'm misquoting her. But then she said, I became a mom, and they became a, a superhero again. Amen. Y'all, y'all in a different type of bag tonight. I ain't going to hold you. Um, 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 DWR Dupreem, somebody take it away. Uh, final <laughs> thoughts on final thoughts on D, on Dupreem. <laughs> no, no, no. I just had a full circle moment, man. And I'm gonna say this, man. The slogan for my company, as I as I'm reading what I'm reading, which is the slave narrative. I just realized our our freaking like this shit is crazy. Our tagline is own your narrative. Yes. And that's it, man. We gotta own our narrative. We gotta tell our story. So that that will that will make sure we reflect on all aspects of our lives. That's it. I land. Um I'm gonna play this clip again so that uh Ab can hear it. D, you sit tight for a moment. I mean Ab sit tight for a moment. I'm gonna come to you, D, but I'm gonna play this clip real quick so Ab can hear it so he can give final thoughts to it. Live on Broadway podcast. My spiritual advisor, Monica Zanz, had me write a letter from my big self to my little self, apologizing for leaving him. Mm. And then when you're done with that letter, switch to your non-dominant hand, which activates a different part of your brain. And I wrote a letter from little Garrett to big Garrett. Oh my God. All of a sudden, all these things that I had suppressed and stuffed down for years that I completely forgot about 
all came out. F you, you left me, you this, you that. And I just allowed myself to truly feel those suppressed emotions and let it all out. And as soon as I was done with that letter, I was like, I've deprived myself from the full range of spectrum of me. Mm -hmm. I've been operating as half. D, tap in with me, King. Final thoughts, final thoughts, D. I see it like this. You only live once and you only die once. So um, everything in between is what you make it. So all of that word about what happened in the past and trying to so much fix what happened uh, is not, I don't think people should spend that much energy there. Should reflect on it and have that conversation and then just move forward and, and just always give yourself some type of grace. Um, just knowing that you're a human being just like everybody else and don't try to live somebody else's life. Like live your own truth. Thank you for oh. that, D. Thank you for that, D. Ab, tap in with me, King. Final thoughts. What are your thoughts? I'm here with you, but um, tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, the guy wrote a letter to his younger self. So, and he, he, so, 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 just I, I got you. So, his, so, um, his older, his spiritual advisor, uh, asked him to write a letter as his older self to his younger self, yeah. using his dominating hand, right? So, let's just say most people dominating hand is his right hand, and then mm -hmm. as his younger self, take his less dominating hand, his right, his left hand, and as his using his left hand, write a letter to himself to the older himself as a kid. You get what I'm saying? Okay, okay. Writing a letter to what 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 is to become. And what was, right? Both okay, the duality of it. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. I got and he, you. So he pretty much sums up by saying, you know, once I did that, I realized that I haven't been living my whole complete self. I've been living as half or incomplete and all these different emotions start pouring out. Got you, got you. So got the question you. that I've, so I, a question that I asked everyone else was, have you been living as, have you confronted your younger self? A million times. Mm. A million times. You know, um, my younger self is what motivates me. You know, I mentioned this uh, within a conversation we had prior. Uh, you know, you could <laughs> we we have you could have good times with bad people, right? Mm -hmm. So you can have good memories with bad people. But looking back at my past, I was also a bad person. You know what I'm saying? So it's so funny that um, you know, Mister Nas just now. In his song "Reminiscing," he said, uh, "Why, uh, why reminisce on the past? But how we live it right now is really lit, right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, the you know, I was going over with one of my homeboys the other day, like, yo, we was doing this, we was doing that, but then I had to think about it, like, yo, I wouldn't do that again, like you, you know what I'm saying? So, I definitely did some self reflection. I know where I was in my life before." And I think, you know, what, what you just explained, right? I couldn't hear it well, but what you just explained is, is a person reflecting on their path and understanding, you know, where they were, what their goals were or, or were not, and, you know, um, addressing that head on. And I've done that. I've done that uh, many times over. I do it all the time. It's what keeps me going. It's what keeps me motivated. It's what makes me say what I'm going to do to all of you and and allow y'all to hold me accountable. So next time you do see me, if I say, Broadway, I'm working on this, you you, you know, hopefully in the future, you'll be like, yo, Royal, yo, Abacadab, yo, how, how far you got with that? Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. I ever fall off, just you inquiring will be putting me back on track. You feel me? So. I rest like that. I've, I've, I definitely uh, did some self-reflecting. I knew what I was back when I was younger. I know who I am now, and I know where I need to be to help other people and hope that other younger generations could avoid certain pitfalls that I end up, you know, 
falling into. I rest like that. Wow. Um, I started this podcast off with it, and it just came back to my mind. With so much drama in the LBC, it's kind of hard being Snoop Deagle, Double G. Um, there's a lot going on in the world, and uh, you guys could have been anywhere, but you guys was here with us sharing uh, candid moments and, and being very transparent. So I thank you. I thank you. I'm humbled by that. Thank you so much for that, guys. Um, Live on Broadway podcast. I appreciate everybody. Thank you, Trey. I appreciate the badges, too. Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, cultivating these topics. Thank you so, thank you so much. Um, listen, man, you know the vibes. We be back Monday. Tap in with us live on Broadway podcast. Y'all know my vibe. It's cheaper to be yourself. Be giant. Click. Do you have relationship questions you need answered? Spicy topics. DM us at live on Broadway podcast. Have music, products, or an ad you want us to run? Email us at live on Broadway podcast. Be sure to tap, 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 tap in Monday, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Live on I am underscore Broadway's Instagram Clear <laughs>